Welcome back, and I've got an unusual experiment for you today. What we're going to be looking at is refraction, Fermat's principle, and the path of least time. So, to introduce this experiment, first, a little bit of a story. Over half term, uh, we went to Holland, we went to the Hook of Holland, and we stayed in a beach house. And these rather interestingly shaped cubic beach houses were right on the sandy beach. Uh, they had the dunes behind them. And uh, we made two uh, small mistakes in our booking, though we had a wonderful time. Firstly, the house we booked was right on the end of the row. And secondly, we didn't realise that you couldn't get a car down to them um, because they were on the sand and also because they wanted to make them safe for children and other people to walk around. Um, you had to park your car right up behind the dunes and carry everything down to the beach house. So not only did we have to carry everything, but we had to go right the way along uh, the soft sand and the beach to reach our house because it was almost the furthest in the row. But when doing that, it gave me an idea for a physics video. So the thing about being a physicist is everywhere you go, you see physics around you. And even if it's not a pure physics thing, you see the connection with physics. And um, this is what it was. And I hope I didn't um, bore uh, my partner and son too much by talking about this. But I said to you, we had to drag all of our things down to the beach hut. And there were two options. Um, you could go um, sort of the long way around and drag all your stuff round on uh, quite a narrow um, tarmac path. Or you could go the direct route and drag it directly through the sand. Now, what most people did is they went up to the uh, booking in office and they hired a little trolley and they filled up the trolley and dragged their stuff to the house. Only, they actually found it was pretty difficult to drag the trolley through the sand. So after a while, you saw most people realising that on their third or fourth visit to pick up things from their car, they started using the much longer route to get to their um, beach house. They were using the route, the easy or fast moving route along the concrete path. And it's this that got me uh, going and thinking about an idea to set up an experiment. So I had quite a chat with my partner about this, and I think I probably annoyed her a bit. But I said to her, why are you dragging the trolley directly along the sand to the house? It took two of us to pull it. Why don't we go the long way around and drag the trolley much more easily? In fact, one of us could do it all the way along the concrete path. And then at the last minute, turn in over the soft sand and come to the front of our house. Well, um, she was unconvinced. So I thought what we do is set up a little experiment to see if I could prove if it was quicker to use my method, remembering it was a longer distance. So to the rather bemused looks of our neighbours, I got the hockey stick out that we would brought with us to knock balls around on the beach um, for Barry to chase after. And I drew out two lines on the sand. I drew out a line that was direct to the front door of the house. And what it did was it went mainly across the soft sand, the slow route. And then I drew another line that came to the house along the tarmac path, the quick route, and then only using a short distance of the soft sand. Now, Barry's just about beginning to walk. So I thought, here we go. Let's set Barry off on the two routes and let's time him and see which one gets him to the house the quickest. So here we go. Um, and they say when you're making films, never work with animals and children. And that's kind of how it turned out. So the first thing I did was uh, set Barry off with Steph on the direct route. Um, so what that means is they'd only walk a little bit of the tarmac path and then they'd walk directly to the house on the sand. Remembering that Barry is much, much slower on the sand. Well, it didn't quite work out because he started walking and then looked at other things um, and he decided that he wanted to be carried, etc. But we got there in the end um, and I didn't really get a time for it, but it was clear that he would take a long time to walk along the very soft sand. And so even though it was a direct route, it might take him longer than going along the tarmac path first and then just walking through a little bit of sand to get to the front door. 
So as I said, uh, it didn't work out very well, but here's Barry taking the much longer route. So they were gonna walk much longer on the concrete path and then cut in and only do a short distance on the sand. So that one is further to walk, but because the walking is so much slower in the sand, it's better to do most of your distance, even though it's in the wrong direction, on the concrete path and then to turn in and do the last very short bit, the slow bit, using the sand. So back in the 1600s, middle of that sort of century, uh, Pierre Fermat, a mathematician from France, kind of thought about refraction of light and he was thinking about paths that rays took and he came up with a really interesting concept that if something has to travel from A to B would it take the direct route or would it take the route that took the least time and this is what I was trying to demonstrate on the beach that the quickest way to our house was actually to take a longer route but to do a a quick route on the tarmac path and then leave yourself only a short length of slow route, the sand to go through. Now there's some really interesting physics behind this and the applications of it, but light knows to do this and it's one of the ways we can explain the refraction of light. So applying Fermat's principle to light waves is not an easy thing to do, but what we'll do is we'll do it with just one uh, laser ray here. Now, what I'm suggesting is I'd like to get some light to go from here, point A, to point B. But it has to go through air, which is a fast medium, and then it has to go through plastic, which is a slower medium. So we've got two options. The first one is to go direct, so straight through a piece of air which is fast, a short length, and then a really long piece of plastic which is much slower. But Applying Fermat's principle, light knows, I suppose, there is a way of describing this mathematically, that it should take the shortest time. So what it does instead is it heads off in the wrong direction, but it does a lot of the distance in the fast medium in the air. And then it turns and does the rest of the journey in the slower medium. And that explains why it has to go off at the wrong angle to begin with, in other words, not in the correct direction, and then turn or refract to get to point B. The route you're seeing here is from point A to point B, you're seeing the route not of the shortest distance, but of the shortest time. So whilst we're on the beach, there's one other really nice application of this. I've set up the camera to represent an aerial photograph of beach and the sea, the water. And if you imagine you're a lifeguard and you're stationed here and you see someone drowning in the water here, think of the options you've got to get to them. You could go from the lifeguard point along a little bit of beach and then swim and swim and swim and swim, and that's gonna be much slower. But of course, what you'll learn to do is run along the beach quite a distance and then cut in and swim to the person. And what you're doing is taking the path of least time yet again. So I hope you enjoyed that explanation of Fermat's principle. Sorry the experiment on the beach didn't work very well, but you can see how the physicist's mind works. You, you see something in front of you and you think, oh yeah, that's just like physics. I wonder if I can um, use that to demonstrate a physics principle. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.